Eric Sos, we are so excited for you to come with us as we celebrate for the Word of God. Now let the celebration begin. Stand to your feet, please.
La escritura para hoy viene de Josué capítulo 1, versículos 7 hasta 9. Solo te pido que tengas mucho valor y firmeza para obedecer toda la ley que mi siervo Moisés te mandó. No te apartes de ella para nada. Solo así tendrás éxito donde quiera que vayas. Recita siempre el día de la ley y medita en él de día y de noche. Cumple con cuidado todo lo que en él está escrito. Así prosperarás y tendrás éxito. Ya te lo he donado. Sé fuerte y valiente. No tengas miedo ni te desanimes. Porque el Señor tu Dios te acompañará donde quiera que vayas.
The djembe drum is said to have been invented in the 12th century by the Mandinka tribe in what is now Mali in West Africa. It has been played by West Africans for generations, forming an important part of ceremonial life in Mali, Guinea, Senegal, and other neighboring West African countries. The NBC youth will perform the African drum selection called Samba Creole.
Wax Museum. Now let me tell you what's gonna happen. We have some senior citizens that have come to church today and they are going to come and they're going to come and see the Black History Wax Museum. They are gonna come up to these statues and punch a button and guess what? The statues are going to come to life. Isn't that something? Yeah. They're gonna come to life and they're gonna tell you who they are. Now, these senior citizens, they've never been anywhere like this before. <laughs> so when they come in, they're gonna be oohing and aahing, and they're gonna just think it's just so exciting to see all of this. So let's see their reaction. Let me go get them off the bus. Oh, no. <laughs> Michigan. 
I was four years old when I won my first tennis tournament. I was the last tennis player to hold up four Grand Slam titles at the same time. My sister and I have also won several Wimbledon championships at the same time. Who am I? I am Serena Williams. And my sister, Dee is from Bucky Graduate University. I'm also transforming Southeast Houston through science, technology, engineering, arts, math, and community development. I am the pastor of the New Beginning Church where we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Who am I? Dr. Matthew Alexander Davis. Okay, 
Wasn't this exciting? Did y'all enjoy this? Because of them paving the way, we are free to be whatever we set our minds to be. Every one of us are standing on their shoulders. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the opportunities that we have. Please listen when we sing Grateful to You.
Well, we really, really thank God for young people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. Young people will keep you moving. Young people will start you moving. We are grateful to God for young people. We thank you, Sister Davis, and others who have invested in these young people. And certainly we never know what they will become. But if they stay like they are, they have become great people. Amen. Let's thank God again for them. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Call your attention to the Old Testament. The book of Joshua. Chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4. We look at verses 19 through 24. Joshua chapter 4. Verses 19 through 24. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. And he has blessed us again. You see, if you will discover these words. Now, the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they camped at Gilgad on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters, of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over. That all the peoples of the earth may come to the land of the Lord, that it is mighty that you may fear the Lord, your God, forever. I want to ask the question, what are these stones? All right, all right. What are these stones? <clears throat> After a week long of preparation on these particular verses, I arrived at the church this morning and looked at the Bible that I leave at the church. And exactly 13 years ago, on the fourth Sunday in February, I asked the question, what are these stones? But I guarantee you today, we're going to identify other points in the text. What are these stones? Some versions may ask, what do these stones mean? Another version of the Bible asks the question, what is the purpose of these stones? The Israelites had left Egypt land. 400 years of captivity identifies us as, as African-American people of 400 years of captivity. They had left Egypt. They had seen God do great things through his plagues. They had seen miracles right before their eyes. They had gone over into Canaan land, and when they got there, 12 spies went, and two of them saw something different from the 10. 
Yeah, some of them came back and said, oh, there are grapes over there. They are huge. There's all kind of fruit over there. They are huge. The land is piteous. It is an awesome sight to see over there. But there are giants in the land. And we can't take them. That was the report of the majority. But the minority report was the report of Caleb and Joshua. They say, yeah, they're right. There are big, huge fruits over there. There's a lot of food for us to eat over there. Yes, the land is plenteous. And like they said, there are giants over there. But we can take them. Because God has promised we can do it. Let me just stop right here and say to every young person in the room, Every young person that is listening, God has prepared you for such a time as this. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what your family lineage is. It doesn't matter whether you were born Latino or African American or Caucasian. It doesn't matter if you are Asian or you can't figure out who you are. God has a plan for your life. And it is a wonderful plan for your life. You have demonstrated before us this morning that you have a better mind than most of us in the room. Some folk are sitting there and are even right now as I am saying how did they put all that in that little bit of noggin they have. But because of God, you've been blessed of God to do what you do to handle life as you handle it. And God is going to bless you. Right, when we look at the text, we find the Israelites, those who were in captivity, we find the Israelites who used to follow Moses. We find the Israelites after Moses is dead and gone. As you have read in Joshua chapter 1, God says to Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now you go ahead and get these people together and lead them over the Jordan. I want to say to you today, it doesn't matter who came before you. All right. It doesn't matter who set a standard before you. When God is with you, you can do great and mighty things. Amen. When you look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 6, 7, 8, and 9, God continues to say to young people all over the world, be strong and very courageous. He said, don't let what you see bother you, but be strong and very courageous. It's saying to young people all over the world, don't be afraid of what's going on around you. I know life looks bad. I know things are tough. I know it looks like we can't get through this moment. But God has a way of blessing us regardless of what we see. Yes, Lord. We must walk in faith. That's right. We must see something other than what we see. Right. We must use an a imagination to see what we can become. Yes, yes. That's why these stones are here. That's why Dr. Charles Brew sh showed up this morning. That's why the, the first African-American first lady, Michelle Obama, showed up this morning. That's why Ruben Bridges showed up this morning. That's why Mu Muhammad Ali showed up this morning. These are stones that have been left along the way that we can see that God pulled them out of object poverty to get them here today. Thank you. When you look in their history, they weren't rich. When you look in their background, they weren't born with a gold spoon in their mouths. But they had determination to keep right on moving. These are reminders that God is going to do some great things, even with us in this generation. What are these stones? 
Why are they here? What do they represent? What is their purpose? It's all because God wants to remind us of who he is, what he can do, and how he can use you. My first point today, God reminds them of who God is. He is God. He is God all by himself. He is God who's God regardless of where you are. He's God regardless of the conditions you're in. He's God regardless of your sin that you've committed. He is still God. And he is the almighty God. So the first thing we need to be reminded of these stones is the fact that God is God all by himself. Yeah. If you're going to trust anybody, if you're going to depend on anybody, you better depend on God. That's right. That's this time you're steady, I couldn't speak at all. Now it sounds like I'm going through puberty. <laughs> but it's only because of God. And as I get through this message, I understand it's going to be because of God. So after they, they went through the Jordan, a body of water, a great big body of water, as they went through the Jordan River, God did the same thing under the leadership of Joshua that he did under the leadership of Moses. God keep giving us miracle after miracle after miracle. When will we get it? That he is God. The Bible says when the priest put his toe in the water, the water stood up and congealed. When the priest put his foot in the water, they were standing in a body of water and they couldn't drink it all and can't swim, could not swim through it. But when the priest touched the toe in the water, the water stood up and they were able to walk through on dry ground. It says something there. It says something there. If you don't like the preacher, you better check yourself. I just, I just thought I'd parenthetically throw that in there. If you, if you don't care for the preacher, you better watch yourself. The Bible did not say when the members showed up at the water. It says when the preacher put his foot in the water, then the water responded. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say to you, in your life, in your lifetime, in your life, sooner or later, you're going to need a preacher. Right, Matter of fact, we needed one when we came here. Yeah, yeah the doctor delivered him. But you're going to need the word of God through the man of God to speak to your child as you move forward. In the African American church, we only had church. In the African American community, the only base we had was the church. Our foundation was in the church. Our civil rights came out of the church. Our politics was bound in the church. And that's why I don't understand today why black folk don't go to church. It is the church and the preacher that God has placed on planet earth so we can get from glory to glory. The Bible says as they approach the water, the preacher put his foot in the water and the water respond. I want to say to you, some miracles don't come through somebody else. I know you talk to God. I know you got a personal relationship with him. I know that you can tell God what you want, but sometimes you need a buddy to pray for you. Sometimes you need a man that's in touch with God to call on God or on your behalf. Young people, don't be fooled. I know generations all over this world, this present generation, think that they don't really need to show up at the church. But God has a way of putting us together in the church that we just can't make it put together on the football field. The Bible says when they got to the water, the preacher put his foot in the water and the water stood up like jelly. It congealed and they walked through on dry ground. My next thing to you is 
these stones are a reminder to us of what God has done. Yeah. He says, take 12 men from each one from each tribe, and you take the stones, and when you get there, you take them out of the Jordan, and when you get on the other side, you create a Gilgal. The word Gilgal means a circle. So most theologians believe that they created a circle with the stones. And so when your children ask you a question, what do these stones mean? You can tell them is this because of the miracles of God and what God has done for us. Well, Let me tell you, young people, young people, you can't throw away everything that mom and daddy has taught you. You can't forget about everything that because you got something new. You, you, I know, I know mom and daddy are, they're old folky. I know they don't know what they're talking about. I know internet wasn't even in when they grew up and they were your age. But just like this, we all have red blood and we all got in trouble. The problem is some church folk have gotten to a point where they're so holy that they can't deal with normal folk. And so children bag off of you because you act like you just stepped out of the clouds. And when you act like you just stepped out of the clouds, they say you are up here and you are the, they are down here and they can't touch that. But let me just start notice today, young people, we messed up just like you messed up. We did the same things that you are doing today. They may call it a different name now, but it's nothing new under the sun. So at Gilgal, they created a circle. At Gilgal, the place where they camped. At Gilgal, they left some stones there. And the Bible says the stones are there to this day. Why are these stones here? First of all, to remind us who God is. Secondly, to remind us of what God has done. Thirdly, it is to remind generations after generations that God brought us through. Yes, thank you. I know they're trying to get rid of African American history. Yeah. I know they're trying to tie it up in politics. Yeah. But every day of your life, you live in African American history. Yeah. You remember the skit that the children did, imagine a world without black people? Imagine a world. Somebody reached for the iron and no black person is there, there's no iron. Somebody looked for their clothes because no gin is there. They don't have clothes. Somebody reached for the iron board. There's no iron board there because there are no black people in the world. Black people got to get off this thing. Black and brown people got to realize that they are special in the sight of God. And regardless of what other folk have, you are still special to God. Young black and brown girls need to understand that men are men and men are put on earth to protect them, to be the priests of their household, and to make sure they provide for them. Every man in the room needs to make sure that if there's a woman or a girl in your house, you make sure you become the priest of the house. You lead them to God. You nourish them in the word of God because you're the priest of the house. You're the preacher of the house. You're the one who is called to be the priest of the house. You're the one that the call to that they hear the word through. They should not come to the church just to hear the word. You ought to have bathed them in the word at the house. That's right. The late Dr. Miles Monroe puts it like this. He says that if honey is getting a little fussy. You got to get out there and walk with her. <laughs> Let me see if I can put that another way. If things are going on with your wife, and she doesn't like the way she looks anymore, it is the man of the house responsibility to make sure he ministers to her, even in a physical sense. And not just in a sensual sense. 
If, if she says that she forgot something and, and she didn't remember, it's the man of the house responsibility to say, baby, I'll help you find it. All right. Because you are her husband. You are the priest of the house. You're the one that leads her to God. You're the priest of the house. You're the one that informs her of who God is. You are the man. Then you can throw back your shoulders. Raise your head and say, I'm the man of the house. The other thing about the man of the house, he's a protector. Somebody act a fool outside and, and she turns, she touches you and say, hey, somebody's crazy outside. Don't you tell her, go take care of that. You're the protector of the house. The Bible says that the man of the house has to be a strong man because the devil cannot overthrow the strong man's house unless he overthrows the strong man. Right. Sister Davis, Sister Davis, Sister Davis just really got it made, you know? I mean, she got it made. Even with no voice, she said, go see. Go check out. Go look. Even when we go to the gas station, you know, you got you to gotta be alert when you go to the gas station, right? Sometimes she forget I'm outside and she's looking at the phone, answering emails, answering the phone talk. They could have kidnapped me and walked away with me. <laughs> but now if she walks to the store, just get the feet from the gas station, she wants me to watch her because I'm the protector of the house. She may, she may push me around in the house for miles, but time is time to go to the mailbox I got to be there with her because you know things are happening these days. Because I'm the protector of the house. You're the priest of the house. The protector of the house. You're the provider of the house. Regardless of what's needed. Boys have to grow up to be men. And whatever is needed in the house, the daddy, the man, the boy in the house has to go get it. There are many times, there are many times that, that I didn't know where things were going to come from, but I did know that I had the responsibility to make it happen. I just had to make it happen. Uh, Sister Glover, I didn't know where the next one was going to come from. I didn't know how this was going to come from. Not only am I the provider of what is needed, I'm also the provider of what is wanted. Amen. Man said the other day, baby, I think you got it. Give me the Amazon call. They went to counseling over Amazon call. In the counseling session, the woman says, he said he wants a divorce. He said, I didn't say that. She said, you said you want to get rid of my Amazon card. That's just like saying you want a divorce. It's the little bitty things that we do that make a world of a difference. God even holds us responsible for just making sure the finances are right, even when she messes it up. In the text, you got 40,000 soldiers, 40,000 men walking through the Jordan and no one was left behind because these men are the protectors of the whole community whole nation. So we must be reminded of who God is, must be reminded of, of what God has done, and we must be reminded to take to every generation the goodness of God. We must re remind every generation of what God has brought us through. When I grew up, we had, we had a lawnmower with circles on it. A wheel on this side, a wheel on that side, and, and isolating blades in the middle. And this is what we had to use to cut the lawn with. And we would push it and pull it and push it and pull it. And now children think that lawnmowers have always had motors on it, a string that you pull. Now they not only have motors, they have electric motors on it, and you don't have to pull it. Children think that we've always driven cars like we drive. Many of us had hoopties growing up. 
Many of us were embarrassed for our parents to drop us off in front of the school. We would tell her, let us off at the playground. Many of us knew what it meant when it said kneading the dough. It's because mama and big mama knew they would get in the kitchen and they would make their own biscuit. They didn't have the biscuit that you go to the store, wrap the unwrap it off and pop and out comes dough and all. They didn't have flaky biscuits. They, they, they couldn't put it in the microwave and bam, your meal is done. That's what these stones mean. It means that God has brought us through. When we didn't have, we trusted God. I've said to you several times, Big Mama didn't have a, a first grade education, but she had a connection with God. And because of that connection with God, God kept right on blessing her, regardless of what came up. She knew how to call on God. My, my, my fourth point to you today is, these stones remind us in difficult times that God will see us through. Anybody got a difficult time right now? I'm not, I'm not talking about a sore throat. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about drain, draining of sinuses. Do you, are you going through a difficult time right now? Are there some things pulling on your heart right now that you can't get rid of? Are there some things that you, like Paul says, that I had a thorn in my side and it kept me humble, it kept buffering me, and I just couldn't. I prayed to God three times to take it away, and God says, my grace is sufficient. Let God tell us his grace is sufficient. We said, God, what, what are you talking about? What do you mean your grace is sufficient? We want to make sure, we want to make sure that we understand that in difficult times, God is still God. Yes, he, is. he is still watching over us. He's still keeping us. He's keep, still blessing us. He is still God regardless of what we've gone through. Time of sickness, he's God. Time of bereavement, he's God. And he is the awesome God all by himself. We have to have some stones. Do you have some stones? Do you have some pictures of, of how you grew up? Do you have pictures of, of, of cotton gin? Do you have pictures of people chopping cotton? And see, today when children hear the word, the phrase chopping cotton, they think you go out there and you chop the cotton stalks down. But when you're chopping cotton, you, you manicure in the cat. You chop them around and you, you pluck it up the weeds and you're making sure that nothing can contaminate. You're taking off the bowls and the bull weevils and, and the, the things that you run from. We got women today that run from any bug. If something come out the wood or come out the woodworks, you can have this house, my husband, you can have my children and everything. I'm out of here. Roll runner, this bug is after you. But these are the things that women in the past have gone through and they would just take a spot and pluck them off and crush them. They would just take letters and throw them across the field. But we think that life has always been this way. It has not always been this way. We have to remind generations after generation what we've gone through and how God has blessed us in it. I say sometimes we didn't do a good job because children are not saying yes ma'am, no ma'am anymore. Children are not saying yes sir, no sir anymore. Children are not respectful as they were. And, and you know, you never even have to tell children to say thank you. We need to remind our children of these stones. These stones that, that we were built up with, that we came through, we were taught. We have to remind children of respecting elders. Yes, yes. I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I never wanted dad and mama to know I was in trouble. I never, I never, I, matter of fact, I, I remember the time I leaned across the desk and said, Miss Strawberry, please don't tell my mama. Yeah. Mr. Dennis, whatever you do, please don't bring it up to my dad. Man, I'll stay all 
day, I sweep the floor, I pick up paper, I pick up paper outside. But whatever you do, don't tell my parents, I raise my voice at you. Our principals walked around with a board. And many times it had three, two, three holes in it. I didn't want to go to the principal's office because they didn't sit there and say, are you doing okay today? Is there anything bothering you? <laughs> when you walked in the door, the teacher really didn't have to explain much. Said, he needs a whooping and you got a whooping at school. Yeah. Things haven't always been this way. And before, they didn't even have a cell phone. But before you got home, mom and dad are standing there waiting on you. You get a whooping at school. And get a whooping at home, and you know, we didn't, and we'll get our ties that we rolled taken away from. We didn't have our pad. We rolled the tie. Put dirt in it. Rolled the tie. And 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 then when we got ready to 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 have some flipping fun and some wrestling fun, Mr. Wayne King on Wayne King Plantation would allow us to go out there after school when the men were 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 harvesting cotton, and he would let us play on top of the trailer. I never learned until I was grown why he was so nice to us during cotton picking season. We would get on, you know, we would, we would turn flips and throw each other on top of the cotton. And then when the next batch of cotton comes out, we would move down off of that trailer, go to the next trailer, and then when they come back to this trailer, and then we would pack it, we would just pack it down the man's cotton. He was glad to have children out there uh, uh, during holiday time. He was packing down the cotton. We were packing down the cotton. So after we packed down the cotton, he would get more on the trailer. Things have not always been this way. We got to remind people from generation to generation who God is. The reason why children are so confused today is because we didn't do a good job of passing it down from generation to generation. <laughs> April 15th, 2023, one month away, I will be 60 years old. And still, I have the fear of the Lord of my mama. Mama can call. I can hear her talking to my wife on the phone. And, and Brother Clarence Earl, I'm asking the question, what did I do? She's 600 miles away. But because respect was placed in me. And because they demanded respect. And because they remember respect then, when I was one and two, things that y'all children do, that y'all keep think is cute, it wasn't cute in my house. Because if it's cute at age two, three, and five, when it gets 13, it's not so cute. So I respect. I respect mama at my house. And you know I got to respect it. She doesn't have to say a word. She doesn't even have to look at me crazy. She can just speak. Joshua, she can just speak. And, 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 and guess what? I saw a boy on the, on, on the, on the news feed the other day. He had a bruised face, bruised eye. And he said the reason why he had it was because he, he had something in his eye that his mama thought he rolled his eye. You'll get that when you get home. You, you get that. You, you, but let me tell you, they didn't just discipline us by hitting us. They disciplined us by sitting us down and teaching us the word of God. They made sure that we had the word of God in us. And the reason why we didn't get hit all the time is because the word of God was in us. The word of God teaches us. The word of God teaches us under, to be under control. The word of God helps us to make our future and make sure that we are doing what God has called us to do. My final point, number five. These stones remind the whole world that the hand of God is powerful and we must fear him. These stones remind, remind the whole world that the God that we serve is a powerful God. His hand is powerful. 
The God we serve is an almighty, powerful God. And God wants us to know that he's mighty and he's powerful. Yeah. It's a sad thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. The God we serve is a mighty and a powerful God, and we're going to respect anybody. We better respect him. There was a time, there was a time that people wouldn't steal from the church. There was a time that people would not cuss in church. You can find a seaport sailor that had his life cussed. You can find a chemical plant uh, worker that cussed on a regular. You can find a brother off the street that can't get past two sentences without cussing. But when he got on the campus of the church, he shut the cussing down. His respect fell in place. We got to go back and teach our children how to respect the church. Because we have a powerful God. We have an almighty God. We have a God that never sleeps nor slumber. We ought to have respect at the church. We do say the church is the house of prayer. The church is the house of praise. The church is the house of worship. And therefore the church is the house of power. Let me tell you, when you get around the church, you expect some power. Because the church can call on God when other folk can't call on it. Let me tell you. The average dope dealer wants a woman of God on his side. The average rapper, every time they get up, they want to remind you, I want to thank my God for this award. Even though people say that they are atheists, let me just tell you, when the rubber meets the road and things get difficult, let me tell you, they're going to call on the almighty God because he is mighty, he is powerful, he is the great deliverer, and they know it. They just, they just put on fronts, they just put on airs, they just acting it out, they just trying to be big in front of you. But at, at the end of the day, they know that God is. In control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only do these stones mean that these children are going to know when they ask the question that God has blessed us and God is continuing to keep us, God is continuing to walk with us. Let me tell you, because of the priest of the household, because of the protector of the household, because of the one who makes a way in the household, God is going to bless us as he has done before. We have to trust him and trust him alone. These stones are just reminders of who God is. These stones are just a reminder of what God has already done. These stones are reminders of how God has brought us through. These stones are reminders of what God is doing with us right now. These stones are reminders that we serve a mighty God, a powerful God, an everlasting God, all powerful God. He is God all by himself. We got to make sure that our children know that he's almighty God. And this same, same God, this same God that opened up the Red Sea for, for Moses and the Israelites. This same God that opened up the Jordan River for Joshua and the Israelites. This same God that pulled us out of, out of a civil rights mess. The same God that pulled us out of the last five years of a presidency. The same God is walking with us. He's keeping us in regardless of what happens. He's God. Thank him for being God. Thank him. The Bible says that these 12 men took big boulders, the stones, big boulders, and they put them on their shoulders, and they carried them to the edge of the river, and, and they dumped them off and put them in a circle. Let me tell you, it's a, it was a rock. It was a stone. 12 stones, meaning that these 12 stones are in a circle and, and is reminding us of who God is and what God has done. That's why Jesus says, upon this rock, upon this stone, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The church is the foundation. The church is the way we look at life. That's why we ought to run the church. We got stampedes at the rodeo. We got stampedes at the, at the music 
concert. We ought to have a stampede at the church. We ought to have to set chairs out every Sunday. We, we ought to have to put, put people in the overflow room every Sunday because they're coming to hear the God of the stones. They're coming to hear the God that, that keeps them in the midst of all that goes on around them. They're coming to hear from God and they ain't got time to know who's with who. They don't have time to know who's wearing what. They don't have time to know what your attitude is about because God has blessed me and I came to lift them up. I came to do my own dance. I, I came to wave my own hand. I came to look to God and say, Lord, I thank you for a brand new day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And above all, God, I thank you how you deal with my spiritual life. Thank you for giving your son over 2,000 years ago. Thank you for giving Jesus for us. It was on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago. That mean men killed my Lord. Mean men killed my God. They hung him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died on Calvary, I tell you. He died for you, and he died for me. Lord God, Jesus Christ died for you, and he died for me. They killed him on that hill that day. There were three men on that hill. One on the right hand, and the other one on the left. The one on the left hand died in sin. The one on the right died from sin. But the one in the middle died for sin. His name is Jesus. They killed him, I tell you. Thank God for Jesus. Because just the other day, I was on my way to hell. I had my hell, my hell shackles on my feet. But Jesus saved me. If there anybody in this room today that God has rescued you, he has saved you, you ought to show some sign. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. He died on Calvary. To the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. He, he died on Calvary. Until one centurion soldier cried out, Surely this must be the Son of God. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it to know. Because early that third day morning, he gave it back to Joseph. Early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is present with us today. He says, try me. Prove me. I will show you great and mighty things. The reason why some don't see miracles is because they don't walk with the master of miracles. You gotta walk with the master in order to see great miracles. He's here today. He's present today. The songwriter says he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. You tried a little that. You tried a little him. You tried a little her. You even tried a little them. I say try Jesus. He is able to keep you. The Bible says that he's able to keep you from falling. He's able to present you spotless before the almighty God. His name is Jesus. If you've never tried Jesus, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to try Jesus the Christ. The door of the church is open. Will you come? If you've never tried Jesus, this is an opportunity for you to get it right with God. If you want to sit or you want to stand, if you want to bow your head, just bow your head with me now. And so, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. But I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person.
thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you're born again. And we believe that you're going over to a brand new place, a place called heaven. We believe you just set your reservations to make heaven your home. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. We extend that invitation to you. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is changing lives. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you've received Jesus as your Savior today, just let us know. Inbox us. Let us know. If you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church in Southeast Houston, inbox us and let us know. As foxes have holes, that's their home. As birds of the air have nests, that's their home. And every person needs a church home. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for those who have made a commitment to follow Jesus. We pray that you bless them, keep them, protect them. Bless us, Father God, to continue to march through on dry ground. We know you as the great protector. We ask you to keep us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through time, offering, and sacrifice. Yes, it is. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Please raise your hand. If you want to give by way of sale, if you want to give by way of sale, our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we come today to give unto you as you have blessed us. Lord, we ask you to bless us today that we will give not grudgingly nor out of necessity. We want to please you by being a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. <clears throat> Would you read this scripture for me? Would you read this in unison out loud for me? You just do that for me today. sacrificial gifts.
Thank God for our good, good young people. Amen. March 12th is our 30th year. Boy, I'm getting better and better with this bass now, boy. My bass is getting better. Be gooder and gooder. My, my bass is, is getting there. And I'm about to speak this about like Brother Carter now. I'm, I'm getting there. March 12th is our church anniversary, 30 years of ministry. 30, 30 years of ministry. God has done a great thing over the last 30 years. Amen. The morning service will be blessed with uh, Pastor Aaron, and the evening service will be blessed with uh, Pastor Murray Martin. And so we want to make sure that we come on back out to both services and be a part of that service. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. Thanks our visitors to stand if you're visiting with us. Well, if you are visiting with us, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, if you would like, Brother Galvan, can you run up here right quick, Brother Galvan? Let me see. Boy, you're moving slower than I do, man. Come on, Brother Galvan. Yeah. Oh, brother, yeah, man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm not on the spin, but it's slower. Ah, oh. This is the fastest thing. Possibly a joke. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I want to introduce. Uh, uh, Reverend Stafia Massi, uh, here. and um, she is uh, my sister uh, in Christ. She was also my student when I was uh, a professor at TSU nine years ago. Uh, she took uh, my classes, my history classes, and ever since, after a lifetime in the military, uh, she came to school and finished a bachelor's at uh, TSU, and then a master's at uh, Houston Baptist University, is that, is that right? A master's in theology. And right now she's uh, she's ordained in the Church of God in Christ. Am I right? Yes. No. I volunteer at the Church of God in Christ. I have my congregation at Watermere in Conroe, and um, well, affiliated with three. And that's a Yes, but you know, I am very, very proud of uh, Sister Massey, and uh, she's been a good, a good friend. She's uh, uh, her grandkids visit with my daughter. She came to a birthday party when my daughter was six, and it's really an honor. And we also have uh, también tenemos a, a señor Melo. Su nombre? Yeah. Josmar. Josmar. Yeah. Josmar. Okay. Uh, Josmar Melo. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Jos Josmar Melo. Josmar Melo, and he's the brother of. Uh, Sergio Melo, uh, who comes here regularly. Uh, Josmar Melo, uh, muchas gracias, bienvenido. And uh, yeah, and uh, he was here. Uh, 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 Sister Massey and uh, Josmar were attending the morning uh, uh, Sunday school in Spanish in the back with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. My guest, Clanzer. <laughs> this is Clanzer. That's not his name, but that's what I call him. So. <laughs> this is Clarence Robbins. He's a, he's a cyclist. And I've asked him to come and be with us on a regular basis. And, and he showed up today, amen. And he showed up. And he showed up working. He showed up working. Mucho trabajo around here, amen. So he showed, <laughs> he showed up working. Thank you so much. While we stand and be dismissed, let us remember to keep our our loved ones in prayer. We are still praying for uh, Brother Kevin Whitlock. Uh, he, he got his wife up and, and made her put on her clothes and come on to church today. So we're praying for him. You know how wives can be. So we're praying for him. We're praying for his, his emotions and his physical health. Amen. So tell him we appreciate him pushing you out the door this morning. Amen. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, God, that you are the God of the stones. You're the God who reminds us of who you are for blessing our lives. God, we have some before us, Father God, who need you right now. We ask you to bless in the name of Jesus as only you can. 
move as only you can. Yes. Bless, Father God, and touch the bereaved. We pray for those who are waiting on you to deliver. And we know you're the only one who can do it. We pray for marriages. We pray for singles. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us to watch you in motion. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Our mission and vision statement. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world. As we are reaching souls, I lift to Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you. You are dismissed.